Hey, my friend, and welcome to lesson four. Okay, now this lesson can be a little bit tough, and sometimes it can be a little bit hard to hear. But in it being a little hard to hear, you can also really start like putting little pieces of the puzzle together, maybe pieces of your life together that you didn't really know how they fit. So stay with me, okay? Especially if this is a new concept to you. Stay with me. So lesson four is emotion manifests in the body. Okay? Emotion manifests in the body. Everything in this universe is energy. Everything is energy. And emotions are also just energy. They're actually energy in motion. Emotion, energy in motion. So emotions are just energy. They're not necessarily good or bad until we associate them with things that feel good or bad, until we assign them labels. Emotions are just energy. And Many of us throughout our lives have been trained to stuff our emotions, to push our emotions down, to ignore our emotions, to deny them, to pretend they don't exist, or to let them rule us. Maybe you were taught one of those things. Maybe you were taught that you weren't allowed to be emotional, you know. Don't you cry or I'll give you something to cry about. Did you ever hear that one? I sure did. I didn't cry very much after that. Maybe you were taught to eat your emotions away. To stuff them with food or alcohol or drug or drink. Maybe in your world, uh, emotions were never talked about. So you just pretended that you didn't have any. Emotion is a powerful aspect of being human. And many of us have not really embraced feeling our feelings because they're uncomfortable. And yet, when we start to look at our emotions and we look at how much control they have over our lives, how much time and energy it takes to hold our emotions down, I want you to, to imagine that I've got the, the emotion of fear. Okay? Just imagine, I want you to pretend I've got a beach ball right here, and, this is, and the beach ball represents the emotion of fear. And I don't want to feel fear, because for God's sake, that'd be bad, and who knows what might happen. And, and so I, I don't want to feel it, I just want to ignore it, I want to deny it, I want to pretend it doesn't exist. So imagine I'm in a swimming pool, and I'm holding that beach ball down. And I'm using, what, all of my force, right, to get that beach ball to go underwater so nobody sees it taking all of my energy and all of my concentration and all of my focus to hold that beach ball underwater. Yeah? You with me? I think about how we do that in our bodies. We just push it down. Ooh, I'm starting to feel it. Ooh, no, it goes down. Well, if I'm holding that beach ball underwater, as soon as I look the other way, it pops up. As soon as my focus shifts, it pops up. As soon as as soon as I get distracted for a moment, that energy of that beach ball, it pops up. And there it is, and there it is, and there it is. And it's usually not very pretty. You know, so that energy, that was fear, right? It pops up. It shows up in ugly ways, at unhealthy un, um, times, in ways that we didn't mean for it to, we didn't intend it to. But because I was spending all of my energy, think about how much energy it, have you ever held a beach ball underwater? Think about how much energy it takes to hold that sucker underwater versus if I just let the beach ball float on top of the water. 
And if I'm using all of my energy, my life force energy to hold my fears or my, my guilt or my shames or my angers or whatever my emotions are, if I'm using so much of my life force energy to hold those down, to hide those, to, to pretend they don't exist or to stuff them in whatever way I'm doing that, then I want you to imagine how much energy you would have if instead of using your life force to push it down, you just brought it up. You let it come back up to the surface. We looked at it. We felt it. And maybe then we could heal it. But see, what happens is most people spend a lot of their lives, and this is just training. It's just what we've learned through a variety of sources to keep that pain and that emotion down. And it stays down for so long until oftentimes it manifests as a disease. So the disease of whatever you want to say, the disease of cancer, the disease of, of, of um, a heart issue, the disease of cholesterol, the disease of, of um, uh, well, any disease. You can use any disease. If we really dug in and sourced the disease, we could discover the emotional pain that has manifested the disease. And if we heal the emotional pain, we can heal the disease. Now, that might sound like a pie in the sky idea to you. From my experience, this is absolute reality. I've seen it. I've lived it. I've done it myself. I've walked it many, many times. I've taught it for years and years. And hopefully, if this is a new concept for you, it brings you hope. And if it's not a new concept for you, it's a reminder. And maybe it's time to look at where some of those emotions have have been stored and let them up and not push them down anymore. And as we do that, we bring that life force energy that we've been using to keep it down, we bring that life force energy and we use that to rise it up so that it can heal. That's why we're on this healing journey, my friends. We gotta be aware of it. We gotta have our eyes wide open. We've gotta be willing to be connected and be present. We, we've got to tap in and connect and be in tune with our minds and our hearts and our bodies and our souls so that we can recognize the emotions as they're manifesting in the body. And if there is any just little ripple, well, then we can heal that very quickly. And if there's a manifestation of disease, that we can flip that around and actually have a complete healing. Now, if this is a new concept for you, you may want to check out a couple of books, even if it's not a new concept, but maybe you, you aren't aware that there's some, some really amazing teaching around this. Most people are familiar with Louise Hay and either the book, You Can Heal Your Life, uh, which has a lot of the emotional components in the back of the book, or um, Heal Your Body, which is a little book that has a bunch of the information about um, diseases and emotions and, and what, they, uh, what they mean why they are connecting. If you haven't uh, uh, ever read any of that, then that's a great place to start. There's a new book that's been out for several years now, and it's called The Secret Language of the Body. In The Secret Language of the Body, it's by Inna, I-N-N-A, Siegel, S-E-G-A-L. And it is a phenomenal book. If you want to look up so many illnesses, diseases, areas of the spine, if you have back issues, you know, knees, things like that. This is a powerful, powerful, powerful book that can help you to identify. It will either identify it for you directly or it will lead you to it based on the information in the book so that you can see what the emotion is, align with that, look at it and go, yep, I've got that going on, and then take the steps to heal it. Take the steps to heal it because you have the power. You already learned about presence, right? 
your power is in this present moment. So as soon as you have an awareness, your power in that present moment can change the illness, the diagnosis, the disease. So check those two books out, okay? You can heal your life or heal your body and the secret language of the body. They're going to be in the resources tab. The link is there so that you can uh, click right there and go check them out on Amazon if you, if you feel guided to. And in the meantime, what I'd like you to do is I would like you to take some time to really look at how do I deal with my emotions? Do I stuff them? Do I ignore them? But just really pay attention to that. Maybe do a little journaling around this for yourself. And then if you have any physical manifestations or disease or diagnosis, and I'm certainly not about empowering any of that, but I do think they're great indicators. It's just an indicator that something's out of alignment. Kind of like, do you guys remember the operation game, right? The operation game and you had the little, little tweezers and if you got too close to the, to the edge of the body, it would zing and it would, it would beep and it would make this loud noise. Well, that's kind of what the indicator is. It's just saying, hey, something is out of alignment right here with me. And it's an emotion that's out of alignment. And when we get a little too close, boom, it zings. Like, okay, we need to do something about it. It's getting too big. My container can't hold it anymore. Simple as that. But take some time and write down the, the illnesses and the, and, the, and the manifestations that you have going on and check those books out. Get it, go online and read about them and see if, if you can look and find and discover what is that emotional component and what am I willing to do to change it up? What am I willing to do to do it different? What am I willing to do to quit pushing the beach ball down and instead invite it up and say, hey, Thank you for sharing. Thank you for letting me know you're here so I can do something about it. Because you can. You can, as sure as I'm sitting right here right now, my friends. Anything can be healed. Anything.